Hi everyone, today I'm going to talk to you about aspect ratios. Now this is something that I've neglected for the longest time, for the first year and a half that I've been smartphone filmmaking. And I've only realised now that it's actually a really, really important part of storytelling, or it can be a really important part of storytelling. And we see it in films all the time, we're just not necessarily in tune to what it is and why it's being used. So today I'm going to show you within Filmit Pro what aspect ratios you can use, why you might use them to enhance your storytelling for different aspects of storytelling, and also talk about crop source overlay in terms of whether you might want to use it and when you might not want to use it. So let's get into it. So if you press settings on the bottom right of the screen here, that will reveal your menu. And on the top left of the menu, you've got resolution. So we're going to click on resolution. And you can see at the top here, you've got all the different aspect ratios you can use within Filmic Pro. You've got 16 by 9, 17 by 9, 3 by 2, 1 by 1, 2 2 by 1, 2 7 6 by 1, 4 by 3, and 2 3 9 by 1. These are all your available aspect ratios you can use within Filmic Pro. So let me show you the effect of each one of these. So we'll start off with 16.9. So if we touch on the screen here, you'll see this is the full screen. So this is actually 16 by 9 is the standard for UK and US TV broadcasting. So this is your typical look that you'd see on a TV or that you have filmed for TV. It's also the same aspect ratio that comes as standard with your phone sensors. So if you watch anything on your phone, for the most part, it's going to be in 16 by 9. I've used this a lot in my own short films, such as Lucky the Dog, Whistleblower, also Survive at All Costs. It's a really good standard look. It's widescreen, but not super widescreen. So you'll see uh, later on when we get into different aspect ratios that this isn't the smallest aspect ratio you can use. If we go into 17 by 9 ratio, you'll see we actually have a very subtle sense of widescreen. So we've got slight black bars, or letterboxing as it's called, above and below the image here. But yes, that is used for laptop viewing mainly. It's very, very rare to use, and you're probably not going to use the 17 by 9, but it is an option. So if we go back into our aspect ratios and choose 3 by 2, you'll now see we've got black pillars on the left and right of the screen. That is to mimic the 35 millimeter film look. So if you want to do something that's got a bit more of an older film feel, then this is something that you can go for. So I say you've got kind of cut off edges on the left and the right, but you can see through when you've got crop source overlay turned on as I have, you can see slightly through the black pillars uh, to the size or above or below if you're using those as well. But this is for the 35 millimeter film look. And you'll see if you go for the one by one, we've instantly got much, much thicker black bars on the left and the right of the image. A lot of you may recognize this and that is because it's used for Instagram. So if you want to create photos or videos, anything like that for social media, particularly Instagram, this is the aspect ratio you want to go for. Or if you're, you know, got a filming segment where someone's doing something for Instagram on your film and narrative film, then you can use the one by one for that aspect ratio. As we go for the two, two, one look, You'll see we're going into more of a widescreen image. So you've got the letterboxing above and below the image. And this is to represent the standard 70 millimeter film. So again, some of these are different representations of millimeters of film. Some of these are for social media and some of these are just simply to give you a different feel for the audience. This one is for the 70 millimeter film look. Next up, we're going to look at the 276 by one. And this is where it gets really, really interesting. This is the ultra Panasonic widescreen look. So this is something that's rarely used, but it, probably one of the biggest films that was used recently-ish for it was Tarantino's Hateful Eight. If you look at that, this is great for landscape shots for those kind of films where it's a Western, that kind of vibe as well, cowboy films. We're showing a lot of landscapes. It really, really shows off the area and the locations that you're filming in. It isn't used very often, but if you use it correctly, this is a really, really great aspect ratio. So now if we go back into resolution and change this aspect ratio to a four by three, You'll see now we've got pretty thick pillars on the left and the right of the image. That's because this is the old TV ratio. So before we went to a 16 by nine, it was initially a four by three. So if you wanna go for a really retro feel, maybe you wanna make a film that looks like it's very, very old fashioned, like pre nineties look, then this four by three is a really great way to go. You could also get that retro VHS look. If you put an overlay over it, get that kind of rippling effect of the static on a VHS tape you can create some really, really nice retro looks. This is also named the Academy Ratio as it became the standard for films back in 1932. A little bit of history for you there. But now this is, whilst obsolete for now, it has been used for a lot of films. And if you are watching an old film on a modern TV, you may still see these black bars if it's originally filmed in a four by three, or if it's a repeat of a TV show that's old. Now, if you go into the two, three, nine by one, this is essentially a wide look, but particularly it's imitating the anamorphic look. So this 239 by one, so if it's a Moondog Labs anamorphic lens or a Moment anamorphic lens, anything like that, this is the kind of look you'll be getting without using an external lens. Now it doesn't de-squeeze the image or anything like that because it's just essentially putting pillars on the above and below image what you're seeing now. But this is a nice way to get an uh, anamorphic look without having to buy the lens. So what about crop source overlay? Right now we've got it turned on, but if we go into crop source overlay and turn it off, 
you'll see now that we actually have a guideline for the pillars that would be there or the letterboxing that would be there. So we've got the white lines here. The benefit of taking that crop source overlay off is actually that you can see the whole screen still. So you're not having the top and the bottom chopped off. The reason this is good is because if you've got points of interest for your film that you're missing out because of the pillar boxing or the letterboxing, you can actually adjust the camera to get something that you want or get rid of something in your image that you don't want. So I would say if you're going to adjust this in post-production, then maybe turn the crop source overlay off so you can adjust in post-production. Also film in 4K. Filming in 4K is really important if you're going to not have the crop source overlay turned on. The reason being is that again you can adjust the image and you can zoom in, zoom out without losing any information on your image and making it look blurry. So you can still have the bars afterwards and edit it in post, but you can also adjust your image and whereabouts you want that central frame. And as you can see, that also changes as you go through the different aspect ratios. Interesting stuff, huh? And then we can turn crop source overlay on again, so we actually get the letterboxing effect. Now, the bad side about using the crop source overlay is that you won't be able to adjust it in post. Once you turn crop source overlay on, that's the image you're going to have with these back bars, where it's to the sides or above and below. You're going to have that in post-production when you're editing your clips together. So just be aware that if you're filming with crop source overlay turned on, that is the image you'll be working with in post-production. Whereas if you turn it off, you're going to have the options of changing it. Or if you want to outsource your videos to different areas and different aspect ratios, that'll be the way to go turning aspect ratio off. So I've gone through the different aspect ratios out in the field, telling you about the landscape shots and the one by one, that kind of thing. But actually, there's a few techniques that you can use to really give a different sense of storytelling to your films using the ones that have the black pillars either side on the left and right of your shot. We've now got a 4x3, which is the old television aspect ratio style, so a bit more of a retro feel. But just because it says that it's meant to be a retro feel doesn't mean that you have to use it for that. You can use it to create that kind of shot where someone wants to get out of a situation, it feels a bit claustrophobic, that kind of storytelling. So you've got the landscape as well for doing journeys and that kind of thing and across the landscapes. But this could be a really good technique as well to use if you want to change up your aspect ratios to change the level of storytelling and take your audience into another level of being involved with the story and the character's feelings. Equally, even with the one by one, you get those thicker bars on the left and right that I can see here via my Filmic remote that can make you feel even more trapped as well. So play around the aspect ratios and use them to your storytelling advantage. Well, everyone, I hope you've enjoyed this video and found it really useful and interesting. I know it's not always the most exciting aspect for some people, but this is really, really important. And like I said in the beginning of the video, this is something I've neglected until now. And now I'm really learning about it. I'm going to start playing around a lot more of aspect ratios within my filmmaking to enhance my storytelling and give the audience a different feel as well when they watch films. So if you enjoyed this video, do hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on any more smartphone filmmaking goodness. I'll see you on the next one. Take care. Bye bye.